In our previous video, we have studied about what are microorganisms, where are they found, and how they can be studied by using microscope. Today, we will be studying about types of microorganisms. Microorganisms are classified into five major groups, bacteria, algae, fungi, protozoa, and virus. Bacteria are one of the oldest living organisms on Earth. They are around 3.5 billion years old. Considering the evolution of life, they are believed to be distinctly related to humans. They are responsible for a number of diseases including cholera, tuberculosis and plague amongst others. But they aren't all bad. There are trillions of good bacteria living in our gut which are essential for our body. There are approximately 10 times more bacterial cells than human cells in our body. Isn't that interesting? They indirectly help immune system in fighting against pathogens. They also help in the process of digestion. Bacterial cells are very small, much smaller than plants and animals. They are found practically everywhere on earth and live in some of the most unusual places. They come in a number of different sizes and shapes. Bacteria, the singular is bacterium, are the most commonly found single-celled or unicellular microorganisms. They are also known as unicellular prokaryotes. Bacteria are of different shapes. They may be rod-shaped bacteria known as bacilli, spherical bacteria known as cocci, comma-shaped bacteria known as vibrio, and spiral bacteria known as spirilla. A few examples of bacteria are lactobacillus, Escherichia coli, Vibrio cholera, etc. Algae, singular alga. They are plant-like autotrophic microorganisms. They have chlorophyll and cell walls in their cells, hence are considered to be plant-like organisms. They can be unicellular or multicellular. Algae are also found in clumps known as colonies. As I told you that algae can be unicellular or multicellular, these are few examples of unicellular and multicellular algae. Now let's discuss about the habitat of algae, that means where algae is found. See, algae can be found at a number of places like moist soil, all kind of water bodies, moist rocks, stagnant water and tree barks also. As we have already discussed that algae is found on various surfaces like ponds, rocks, uh, tree barks, etc. Can you make out something very unusual in these pictures? Yes, algae is growing on the surface of animals as well. Can you see algae growing on turtles, crocodiles, sloth bear, frogs, etc.? So that means even on the moist skin of animals, algae can grow. Isn't that so surprising? Have you ever noticed a cottony growth on a stale slice of bread? It happens with many food items when they are left open in moisture. Have you ever wondered why? What exactly is this cottony substance? What is it made up of? Well, these cottony growth is nothing other than live cells. Yes, they are living cells. By now, you would have guessed the name of these organisms. Yes, you are right. These organisms are fungi. Fungi, singular fungus. 
These are organisms that lack chlorophyll and follow heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Fungi can be unicellular or multicellular. They are classified into two broad categories, microscopic and macroscopic. Now, microscopic may include unicellular as well as multicellular fungi, whereas macroscopic may include only multicellular fungi. For example, yeast can be considered as a unicellular fungi, whereas the cottony growth which you saw on the bread can be considered as an example of multicellular microscopic fungi. Whereas mushrooms and puffballs can be considered as macroscopic because they are big enough to be seen with the naked eyes. Multicellular structure usually comprises of a stalk-like structure and a cap on top of it. This cap may be with a bag-like structure or have an umbrella-like structure as in the case of mushroom. They contain spores which can give rise to a new fungi. Stalk is made up of filaments called hyphae. A collection of hyphae is interwoven into a mycelium. So, we can call mycelium as a collection of hyphae. These stalks are actually mycelium made up of hyphae. The hyphae help in absorbing nutrition from the surrounding materials. There are many uses of fungi. One of the important uses as food. Fungi, uh, some of the edible fungi like mushrooms are a popular delicacy. Blue cheese is marbled with fungi. Then many bakery items which we relish are actually gift of fungi known as yeast. Yeast is also used for the manufacturing of uh, bread and beer. These are some of the many uses of fungi as food. Secondly, there are many symbiotic fungi, for example lichens. Lichen is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. Many of the fungi are also having medicinal properties. Um, can you recollect any fungi which is used in medicine? Yes, the first ever antibiotic was produced using a fungus known as penicillin. It was invented by Alexander Fleming and was named as penicillin. There are many other fungi which also have medicinal properties and are used in medicine industry. Do you have any idea about the invention of penicillin? No. Then let me discuss this interesting story behind the invention of penicillin. Penicillin was the first antibiotic to be invented. Before its introduction, there was no effective treatment for infections such as pneumonia. Alexander Fleming in 1928, after returning from holidays, began to sort through petri dishes containing colonies of Staphylococcus bacteria. These bacteria are responsible for causing boils, sore throats and abscesses. He noticed something unusual on one dish. There was one area where a blob of mold was growing. This zone immediately around the mold was clear. As if the mold had secreted something that inhibited bacterial growth. This mold was later identified as a rare strain of penicillium. The research was later done at Oxford University and then eventually it led to the production of drug known as penicillin. Okay, so that's all for today. In my next video, I'll be sharing about protozoans and viruses.